Here is a simulation for thin film interference. So we have uh, light blue, one material, uh, one medium up here, which right on. The pink material here is our thin film material with an index of refraction of 1.6. And the darker blue down here is our third material, uh, which has an index of refraction of 1.33. And what we're showing here, uh, there are three lines, three waves. This is the incident wave. So it comes in, some of it goes into medium number two, some of it makes it into medium number three. When it hits this interface between the first and second mediums, some of the light is reflected. That's what this second ray here is showing. And these rays are shifted horizontally just so that we can see each one individually. Uh, this reflected ray actually happens right on top here, but that would make it too difficult to see. So we have our incident light, our light that reflects off the top, of our thin film and our light that reflects off the bottom of our thin film. If we check our indices of refraction, N1 is smaller than N2, so we get a phase shift when the light reflects off the top interface. Uh, so here we see uh, when the light hits the top of our thin film, it is at just about the maximum on the left side. When it reflects, it has flipped. It's now at the maximum on the right side. That's our 180 degrees phase shift. Uh, when the light hits the bottom of the thin film, it's going from an index of 1.6 to an index of 1.33. Going from a large to a small index of refraction, there is no phase shift. So here our light coming in, hitting the bottom interface, is at about the maximum on the right side, and the reflected ray is again the maximum on the right side. No flip, no 180 degrees phase shift. So those are our three rays and our three uh, mediums. Over here we can see this is how much incident light we have. Right now no reflected light is happening. We have a dark spot on top of the thin film and we can see that by comparing our ray reflected off the top and the bottom of the thin film. So this light ray and this light ray, these waves are out of phase. Uh, this one is at the peak on the right side, this one is at the peak on the left side. They are exactly opposite of each other. And so no light is being reflected. Uh, but we did have incident light that had to go somewhere. So what's happening is it's being transmitted. There's lots of light making it down into our third medium over here. Uh, right now the simulation is paused. If I hit play, we can watch these waves move. Uh, so there you can see each direction that each light wave is moving and how, what they look like as they travel being in phase or out of phase. Uh, let me pause this again. Uh, so right now with red light, we have destructive interference of our two reflected light rays. If I change from red light to green light, we see that these light rays are no longer perfectly out of phase. And over here on the left side, we see that indeed some of the light is getting reflected. If I change from green to blue, uh, now these waves are actually just about in phase and we get lots of light being reflected. So we can compare different wavelengths of light. Uh, I can also change the thickness of the thin film. So if I drag this around, we can go from lots of reflected light to no reflected light to lots of reflected light as we move through different numbers of wavelengths that fit in this middle medium. I can change any of the indices of refraction uh, and so changing whether I get phase shifts or not. I can change each index of refraction. Uh, and this is a great simulation to get a feel for what it looks like if you're a visual learner, uh, what it looks like for the wave to have a phase shift or not have a phase shift. Uh, it's also good practice. You can calculate the thickness that this uh, thin film would need to have to have constructive interference or destructive interference. And then there are actually numbers here. This is, tells us that the thin, thin film is 345 nanometers and our light source um, in our first medium of in our first index of refraction. Actually, maybe this is the wavelength in vacuum. We would have to check this. This is probably the wavelength in vacuum, I suppose. Uh, 440 nanometers. Yes, it must be vacuum because it doesn't change as I change my value of N1. Uh, but we have the wavelength. We have the thickness of our thin film, and we have whether there is light being reflected or not. 
So we can move this around and just check some of our calculations, check our math to make sure we understand these types of problems. Uh, I'll put the link for this simulation in the comments below the video.